Ian, I'm off. Early, isn't it? Big night, mate. Oh, of course. So what exactly did they call five years ago? I don't know. Paper, cotton. Whatever it is, you've got to get them diamonds, right? See ya. Yeah, ta -da. My name is John Dean, and I have organic global amnesia. And how serious a condition is this, John? Sorry, sorry, who's, who's John? <laughs> Five years I've had to listen to that joke. <laughs> and I didn't think it was funny the first time. Now, when John first walked into A&E five years ago with severe maxillofacial injuries and a cranial fracture, he didn't know his name, he didn't know how old he was, he didn't know where he lived. In fact, he had no recall whatsoever of who he was. But what became apparent over the first few weeks that he stayed with us was that he had retained his sense of humour. Now, among other things we discovered were that he, uh, he knew how to use a computer, and uh, although you might have to, uh, to confirm this with my female colleagues, he was a terrible flirt. <laughs> now, what can we tell from this? I think what we can tell is that although John never recovered any factual memories before that day, 
His name, his date of birth, his whole history is a legal fiction created for him by the Department of Health. Even when memory loss is as profound as his was, indeed is, there are other things that can survive, like a sense of humour that can give us, and give him, uh, an idea of the sort of person that he was. Things like feelings, like will, like moral being. And surely these, as much as memory, can define us. John, have you got five minutes? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Yeah, yeah, sure. I've talked to them, and they're smart guys. Where are they based? Cambridge. Cambridge? Well, you wouldn't have to go there. They'll come to us here. You're a precious commodity. Oh, am I? Well, this could be a real breakthrough, John. The results these guys have been having with lab animals have been really impressive. Yeah, sure. Well, it's experimental, of course, but uh, if it worked, wow. Tantalizing thought. Chance to reverse the damage. And what? Find out who I was, go back to that, to him? Well, you'd be offered full psychological support to deal with the implications of that. And I'd be there for you, John, all the way. I'm not saying no, Mark. I'm just saying... It's not great timing, either. Jen's launch of her new business is only a week oh, away. Oh, God, of course. I'm sorry. How's it going? Oh, yeah, fine, fine. Money's a nightmare, but, yeah, it's fine. They'd pay you, John. Well, 5,000 for a few days of your time? Singing for my supper again. Well, if you ever thought I was exploiting... No, I don't. I'm sorry, Mark, I don't, OK? Give my love to Jen, and uh, good luck. If you want to call, that's great, and if you don't, absolutely no problem. No pressure. I'm very happy. We're very, very happy as we are now. Good to see you again. Paolo's Pizza? Uh, delivery, please. Certainly, what would you like? Four Seasons. OK, can I have your address, please? Yeah. 25, Glover. Is that Mr Stone? Yeah, it's Mac. Darling? Oh, hi. What's up? Nothing. 
Dr. Denton rang before you got back. Wanted to check you were okay. What's up, John? What did he tell you? Nothing. He wants me to get involved in some research project. Doing what? Uh, some neurologists from Cambridge think they've come up with a way of mapping memory and restoring a lost one. Oh. In rats, anyway. Rats get amnesia? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they forget their rats, start thinking they've got jobs, wives, mortgages to pay. It's a big problem in the rat world. <laughs> it's early days, it's just experimental. Tough call. Do you want me to do it? Not up to me. I just want whatever decision you make to be for the right reasons. Are you happy, Jen? Does Dolly Parton shit in the woods? Sleep on her back. Does Dolly Parton sleep on her back? Does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Mm, I, I don't know what goes on in there. It scares me. It scares the hell out of me. Doesn't have to. I'm here with you. Come on. Um, Dad. I'll be up in five minutes. I'm counting. Sexual assault, evident in the state. You and Matt Dill? Uh, not in yet, boss. Two months R&R, &R, not enough for him? He'll be on his way. Sexual assault, evident in the state. Don't all rush at once. Knock him up, for God's sake. Tell him he's trying my patience. This is good. Same clothes as yesterday. This is bad. Uh, what time is it? One. Ah, oh, shit. Give me two minutes. You want coffee? I thought we could get a takeout. It's just Lucia you're looking for. Why have you got this other crap? Reciprocation. You stick up mine, I'll stick up yours. Tragic. Yeah, aren't we? One of the fringe benefits of spending months looking at this crap is you develop a bit of an eye for detail. Look at this. Am I supposed to know him? Face doesn't do anything for you. Well, generally, I prefer my blokes with big tits and no bollocks, so no, face doesn't do anything for me. The doctors called him John Dean. His poster was in our notice board. In fact, half the police notice board in England a few years back. Who says I'm losing it? You think this is the same blow? Yeah. Something about the eyes. And the lips. The way they... Something. This is what I've been covering your arse for, is it? You've been covering my arse because you're my mate, if that's a problem. It's not a problem, Mac. Just worried about you, that's all. I'm fine. It's time to let go, Mac. Let her go. Is it? I don't think so. 
I need to see her again. If it's one more time, fine, but I need to see her. I can accept she's gone. I can accept I screwed it up with work and drinking and, and working and... Oh, I'll pay for that for the rest of my life. But I can't accept I'll never see her again because... Because I need to say goodbye. That may well be what you need, Meg. Doesn't mean that's what you're gonna get, though. I just think you need to accept that. Would you? Yeah? It was your wife? Look, what are you gonna do about these? Do it about them? Nothing. It's a bit of fun, that's all. Distraction. Well, I reckon you could be right. Could definitely be the same bloke. Listen, I'm up for this. Uh, we need to tell the boss, though. I'd like to follow it up. Yeah? Yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. A couple of days, boss. Four days tops. Just something to get him out of this downward spiral. She cleared their bloody bank account. How much more punishment does he need? She doesn't want to be found. Tell me about it. All right, all right. Cos he's a mate. Cos he was a good copper. Three days. Is he OK? Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, what do you get? Uh, oh, it's interesting, actually. Paul West went missing six months after his wife and kid died in a house fire. Yeah? No suspicious circumstances, tragic accident, according to the coroner. Everybody thinks he committed suicide. OK. Except they've never found a body. No body. I've got John Dean's current address. Lives in Hampshire with the missus. Come on, let's go pay him a call. On the 10th. Yeah, well, I'm really sorry about that, but it was sent. Yeah, well, I'll, um, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, st I'll stop that one and get another one out to you by the end of the month. Yeah, OK, well, I'm, yeah, apologies once again. Yeah, bye now. So what's up, Jen? The price they gave us for the engine hoist didn't include the fixings. They're saying that's another 300. Well, we need a hoist. Yes, but another 300. Yeah, well, we'll find it. Where? Anyway, I think the laws of the business is a little bit more important than a hoist. You're being very sweet, but I promise you, I'm really beginning to wonder what the hell I'm doing. Well, you're doing what you've always dreamed of, going out on your own, believe in yourself. I do. Uh, well, I reckon you're the only one. No, 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 this is going to work. I know it. Oh, full list of marinas arrived this morning. I'll set up a mail shot this afternoon. No, you can ignore that one. It's just life insurance bump from the bank. Can't afford it. Johnny. <laughs> Marital bliss. Never into boats myself. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Come on, then. Uh, can I uh, get you some tea or coffee? Or... I'll be fine, thank you. So you uh, you said you thought you might have some information about my past. Yeah, well, it's uh, something of a long shot, but uh, a couple of things fit, not least for me, anyway. This. Sorry, who's this? I think this might be you, Mr. Dean. <laughs> That's not John. Well, the weight's different, the hair, the glasses, obviously. No, this is not John. Love. You said there were some other things that fitted? At the moment, just the timing. 
This man disappeared about eight months before you turned up in A&E, &E, sir. And that's all? Jen. But you came all this way for that? Jen, Jen, Jen. I'd love a coffee. Please. Sure. So I've asked Jen for a coffee, and in a few moments, um, she'll bring me up a cup. Not a mug, a, a cup of coffee, white, one sugar, with a rich tea biscuit. Not in the saucer, because sometimes a little bit of coffee spills out. And although I like to dunk my biscuit, I don't like it cold and soggy. Are, are, you, are you, either of you, are you married, Mr. Stone? Mm-hmm. Oh, how long? Five years. So your wife probably has all your little idiosyncrasies down to a T as well? Not all of them. But I bet she knows who you are, what makes you tick. So does Jen. She knows that I'm a bloke who likes a rich tea biscuit with his coffee. Now, if I um, suddenly discovered that John Dean actually, for the first 30 years of his life, preferred custard creams, what do you think that would do to me, to me and Jen? If I discovered that I preferred Chinese, not Indian. If I discovered that I was violent, racist, and alcoholic. See, I, I don't think this is me, but do you know what? Even if it is, um, I don't want to know. I've had the privilege of creating a personality pretty much from scratch. And I think it's a good one. I don't want to spoil that. Thanks. So, uh, thank you for your time and your concern. I think he's West. Yeah? Yeah. For me, the eyes have it. Windows to the soul, eh? Well, he never said he wasn't. As good as. No. He said he didn't want to know. Yeah, I don't get that. I mean, if it was me, I'd want to know. I'd want to know if I had parents or siblings or kids. I'd want to know. You think he'd want to know that his wife and kids died in the fire? Very protective, wasn't she? Nice, that. So, I think we've discharged our responsibility, yeah? I think we should respect their wishes, let them get on with their lives. Why does it make me uneasy, Ian? I don't know, Mike. He hasn't actually done anything wrong, has well, he? We don't know that, though, do we? Don't we? With a fire? It was an accident, yeah? The coroner recorded a verdict of accidental death. Look, this amnesia business, sometimes it can be a way of the mind dealing with bad things we've done, things that are just so horrific, we want to delete them, wipe them out. We? Oui. People. Him, maybe. He had brain damage, Mike. It wasn't psychological. We don't know for sure. Anyway, what came first? So what are you saying? I want to review the files on Susan West's death. The uh, Paul West House fire, 97. Just had the file sent over by Essex Plod. Some interesting details, actually. According to the FIU... Is Essex OK with us? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. So? Well, it is, it is pretty textbook stuff, according to the fire investigation unit. Woman falls asleep in the armchair, boozed up, fag in her hand. Whole lot goes up. What's wrong with that? Nothing. 
apart from the fact that she'd given up smoking 18 months before. It says? The sister and sellers they gave up together. So? She lapsed. With an untipped cigarette. They identified the butt. Untipped, full strength. Is that the sort of cigarette you lapse with? That's Susan West's toxicology report. She'd have been driving, she'd have been about four times over the limit. Traces of tamazepam? Yeah. She was a bad sleeper. I read in one of the statements taken from the sister and sellers that she thought she'd given up smoking. Yeah. And sellers told me her sister didn't drink either. <laughs> well, that didn't worry you? A four-year-old kid died because his mum got shit-faced. <coughs> if it was your sister, wouldn't you look for another reason? Susan West's body was found in an armchair. Yeah. <clears throat> the only piece of furniture that was pre-fireproofing regs. Was it? I remember. Why do you think she wasn't on the sofa? Well, maybe the armchair was her favourite. Smoke alarm didn't go off. Batteries have run out. Exit routes? All locked. Lots of burglaries in the area. The husband, Paul West. Yeah. Nice bloke. He was in Birmingham. Yeah. Computer rep. The sales conference. All checks out. How did he take it? He just lost his wife and his son. How would you take it? He completely destroyed him. So you do think he topped himself? The ferry records show he bought a one-way ticket to Dieppe. Maybe he was planning on emigrating, but he didn't take any luggage. And his bank account weren't touched after that. Oh, and the note he left saying, I can't go on anymore. Little things, I know, but you know what? They do it for me. Except they never found a body. No. Talk to me about Susan West's life insurance. If you're planning to bump off your missus for the insurance money, you'd take out a policy worth more than 200 grand, wouldn't you? You do if you're stupid, which is most people, which is why they get caught. You do if your mills are perfectly innocent. Anyway, there's plenty of ways of hiding money, secret bank accounts, pension. Stop the car. What? Stop the car. Sauce, huh? Is that you or Brennan talking? Ah, it's all right, you know. I know what you're up to is fine by me. You think I don't want a distraction? Or we'll use it. Not the vodka bottle, huh? John Dean's not gonna get rid of the nightmares. Try a sleeping pill. And what about these ones? What about the ones that come during the day? Huh? Things I see. Things I see. What do you see? Something you're not telling me, Mike. No, nothing. We rode, she left. Full stop. End of story. Come on, I won't go back. Do 
just need to make sure I'm not losing it, you know? You'd be doing me a great favor. I mean, basically, I just need to know if these two could be the same person. Okay. Right. Let's have a look. So, this is a thumbnail. If you want a full facial analysis, it'll take time. Sure, just gut feeling, though, you know? Okay. First off, West is slightly heavier than Dean. He's also balding, which actually makes him look older than Dean. So I'm just measuring the distances between the main features here. Eyes, nose, mouth and jaw. West's oral region is completely different. Teeth and mouth shape. But all those things can be changed quite easily. Weight can obviously be lost and gained. Certain medications promote hair loss. Orthodontics can alter mouth shape profoundly. But the malar and superciliary ridge formation are more or less identical. And the bone structure generally, the basic facial map, is very similar. So this could be the same person? Absolutely. But DNA comparison's the only way you'd know for certain. Yeah, yeah. But it is, it is possible. Yeah, it's possible. You're not losing it, Mac. I can say that. What? No, I, no, hang on, hang on, I can't hear. What? <laughs> Does he smoke? Yeah. Does your husband smoke? Sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit confused here. What the hell's that got to do with you? Well, uh, this is part of our ongoing inquiry into establishing your husband's... Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, what do you mean, inquiry? You seem a little reluctant to answer the questions. Yes, he smokes. What inquiry? Untipped. Yes, untipped. Now, what inquiry? What exactly is going on? Your husband's worked in IT in the past, hasn't he, in computers? OK. OK, here's the deal. When you want to tell me why you're asking me this shit, then I'll answer your questions. What, that you met? No, he didn't have any. Parents both dead, no uncles or aunts, and he was an only child. Any friends? Just my sisters, really. He'd been working in the Midlands before he met her, and then they got together just a few days after he came down. So it was like a ready-made social life for him, really. Right, thank you. And they were happy, and...? They were very happy. Paul was such a lovely man. He was just so pleased for Susan when they met. She'd just been through a nasty divorce, had a six-month-old baby. Oh, so the child wasn't Paul's? No. But he was a wonderful father to him. It was like he came from nowhere. Sent by God, we used to joke. And I'd like to ask you some questions about after the fire. Of course. Did you see a lot of Paul? At first. And did you sense, even then, that he was someone that wasn't going to be able to deal with it? He started to drink heavily. Go off for days at a time, and he was gambling. Anything that blotted it out, really. I wasn't going to judge him. Was he working? No, he couldn't work. He was living on the life insurance, and I think he felt guilty about that. I think he felt it was bad money. It, it was like he just wanted to get rid of it and then, of course, as soon as he had. So you do think he's dead then, yeah? Well, of, co of course he's dead. Right. Oh, what else would have happened to him? Sure, absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to take this. Yeah. Where are you, Gov? Uh, I'm on the way in. OK, listen. Brennan's on the warpath. He's had a phone call from John Dean. He was ringing from the hospital. There's been an accident. I can't talk right now. Look, I'll be there in an hour, all right? See you. Mike, that's not why I'm... 
Miss Sellers, I'm sorry, look, something's come up. I'm going to have to get back out of town. Mike, where have you been? I've been ringing you for half an hour. I just needed to think. Listen, psychogenic amnesia. I've been reading up on it. The past will always catch you up, remind you of, of who you were, of what you did. And once you've confronted that, dealt with that, then what's to stop you doing it again? Doing what again? What are you talking about? Killing. Mike, he's trying to save a life. No, no. What the hell's he doing here? Jenna. What is your problem? Come on, mate. You're okay. I only complained to your boss this morning, and already you're harassing us again. I, I, I thought that. What did you think, hmm? What did you think? You think he did something, Paul West, don't you? That's what this is all about. I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. I made a mistake here. Um, uh, I am very sorry. We want to know. Um, Dear Stone's under a lot of pressure at the moment. His wife disappeared three months ago. Tell He's not us. a well man. Uh, th there is no evidence that Paul West did anything. Tell There's us. certainly no evidence that you were him. Tell us, we want to know. <sighs> okay, this is completely off the record, and you didn't hear this from me. Dear Stone, and only Dear Stone, thinks that Paul West killed his wife and stepson. Once again, I am very sorry. Yes, I admit I was clearly wrong. Mac, if you need some more time off... Oh, I was wrong about Dean trying to kill his wife this time. The rest of it, I stick by. Mac! Look, he smokes. West smoked, untipped. He works in computers. So did West. West had no family, no close friends. Similarly, Dean, otherwise, someone would have come forward. The timing fits. Dean appeared eight months after West disappeared. They're the same height. Their eyes are the same colour. Boss, everything fits. The only thing D.I. Challoner got right about the initial investigation into Susan and the child's death was that the sister didn't want to believe she'd get plastered every night because it was too difficult. Yeah, spot on, it was all too difficult. It didn't even occur to the family or anyone else that the deaths might have been suspicious, that he might have slipped her some tamazepam to knock her out and then poured booze down her throat and then set fire to the house. But the facts are, Susan West didn't smoke or drink. There was a life insurance payout and Paul West's body has never been found. I think that's enough to officially reopen the case. Ian? Motive. Opportunity. Why would a man kill his wife and a child for the money, then blow it in a few months? How can he light a fire in Essex when he's in a hotel in Birmingham at the time? You answer me those, Mac. Then we'll talk. Mac! Mac! I have a right to ask questions. What are you doing to me, Luce? Where have you been? Need to be on my own. I thought we were a team. You know what kills me, Jen? What I want to be able to do more than life itself is tell you it's not me, but I can't because I can't remember. It's my worst nightmare. It's what I've always dreaded. That it's not brain damage, that it's psychogenic, and I've done something awful, and, and then I've just blocked it out. No, no. No, 
Not you. No, no, not me. You know, who I was. Who you are is John Dean. A good man. I could still have done it, Jen. No, not you. Another man. And you're getting ahead of yourself because that other policeman said it's only Stone who thinks you and West are the same, or that he even did those things. I love you. I always will. You're John Dean. You're my husband. That's all you have to remember. support you, Mac. I want to be there for you, mate. Help you out in any way I can. But it's not going to work unless I can ask the difficult questions, you know? Jesus. Mac? Oh, no. No, no. <sighs> Who would send this, Mac? How the hell would I know? And why? Why did you do it? Do what? I don't know, Ian. What do you want me to say? Mac, you said you see things. Are they to do with the night she left? Yeah, I think so. What things? I don't know. I can't work out what I'm, uh, what I'm imagining and what I'm remembering. But you must remember the night itself. Some of it. But there's this big bastard gap. I know we rowed. I know I was drunk. I remember she tried to leave. I think I tried to stop her. And then... I wake up, middle of the night. I've got blood in my clothes. I've got mud in my clothes. Yeah. She's gone. Like you never told me this. It's only just coming back. Fragments, bits. You think you fought? Maybe. Think you hit her? Do you think you hit her? Uh, I don't know. Come on, Mac. Remember. 
What did you row about? Was it about why she was leaving? What do you mean? She left because of the row. She left because of the row, didn't she? How would I know? I'm gonna take this down to forensics. Let them have a look. Envelopes and stamps down, you feel queasy. Oh, well, I've got some self adhesive stamps somewhere. Listen, I need a check for the caterers. How much? One, two, five, oh. Who to? H.M. Davis. Davis with an E? Oh, just leave it blank. I'll fill it in. Just sign it. Cheers. Mark Denton rang again. Oh? About the research project. Right. Said the Cambridge company could raise the money to seven grand. Jen. Why, John? Why didn't you tell me they were paying you? Because I didn't want any decision informed by the fact that there was money on the table. Oh, thanks. You think I'd have tried to persuade you to do something you felt uncomfortable with simply for the money? OK, so you wouldn't, and I'm not doing it, so what's the problem? The problem is you lied to me! Is this how it's going to be from now on? Every little misdemeanor analysed and pored over to see whether it tallies with a past as a psychopath? That is an appalling thing to say, and absolutely nothing to do with why I'm angry. Oh, really? Yes, really. I'm pissed off because you shut me out. You always do. You only allow me access to little bits of you, and that hurts. And what do you think I'm hiding, exactly? Oh, don't play games, please. I'm sorry. It's not what this is about. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the money, and I'm sorry if you feel I exclude you. Listen, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the research gig. Okay. If it ain't broke, you said, and you were right. But it is broke, not by us, but it's still broke. So we've got nothing to lose and seven grand to win. <laughs> so if you agree, I'm going to ring Mark and tell him, yes, I'll do it. OK, no dabs apart from yours and Max. Um, stamp. No saliva, self adhesive. Mm -hmm. Postmark? Local. Computer? Sony Vio. Printer HP 5550. 5550. Yeah. Paper? Nothing. Standard. Could have got it anywhere. OK, appreciate it, Albie. Cheers. No problem. What's he done, then? Old Mac.
what you're doing. Uh, stamps. Self-adhesive. Oh, thanks. Listen, I'm just popping into town. Do you want anything? No, I'm fine. OK, see you in an hour. See ya. Just there were no photos in your house. Jesus. Of John, no photographs. Why is that? Well, do you know what? He doesn't like having his photo taken. Is that a crime? Does he have any life insurance on you? You are offensive. Matters come through me. My wife has enough to worry about. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll get a check to you by the end of the month. Yep, thanks. Bye. John. What is it? Okay, I'm just going to say it. I'm pregnant. Oh. My God. Oh, my God, that is fantastic. Really? Yeah, that is... Oh, Jesus, Jen, come here, come here. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a baby. <laughs> we're going to have a little baby. <laughs> You are pleased, aren't you? Why would I not be? Well, because the timing's crap and because we hadn't planned it. You just forgot to take your pill, did you? John, I swear, I don't know how it doesn't happened. Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, love. It becomes the right time when this happens. Okay. Hmm. It's life, eh? Two days ago it could have ended. Now we're growing another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, if we knew what the next step was always going to be, it'd drive you insane, wouldn't it? Won't be late. What time are you meeting them? Oh, uh, five-ish. It's all very informal. It's just going to run me through the protocol, what we're going to be doing. John? No, no arguments, Jen. Maybe Stone's made me realise I really need to do this. And there's seven grand, remember? Johnny? Mm -hmm. The life insurance bump, where is it? Oh, Jen. No arguments? <laughs> Someone else to think of now. Yeah, well, whatever makes you happy, love. They're in the office. See ya. We choose an area. Diencephalon, medial temporal lobe, hippocampus. We map the damage. We inject that area with the amyloid protein. And we thus regenerate a chain of access through the initiating neuron activity of the prefrontals to your memories. Of course, in a healthy brain, this pulse occurs quite naturally. But in your case, either the pulses are, are being blocked or they aren't actually being sent at all because of the, uh, the protein deficiency. Your memories are still there. You just can't access them. You think? We're pretty confident this works, Mr Dean. Oh, yes, basically we are like uh, plumbers. Well, except that we unblock brains and not drains. And you're paying me a fortune. <laughs> mm. So before we do any of that, we need to comprehensively map the dead areas. Yeah, they're all, all tests that uh, you've done before. The, the EAAs, the CT scan, the, the MRIs. Uh, you didn't say this would involve scans, Mark. I didn't know. There's a problem? Well, actually, John suffers from bad claustrophobia. We did a lot of brain imaging, but he never underwent a successful scan. Oh, OK. Yes, well, we wouldn't actually be able to proceed without a scan. Well, then I guess I'll have to deal with it.
Sleep. Right. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, just. I just want you to know that uh, that Coast Guard bloke you want to talk to, um, he can see you tomorrow. Excellent. Excellent. You want a drink? A bit early, mate. Coffee. Yeah, cheers. Susan and Paul West's house. Yeah? Never rebuilt after the fire. What happened to the insurance payout and that? Spent it like the rest. I need a lash. Yeah.
So, was it like a more standing That would be great. No, certainly whilst there's a patient here, at least. Mr. West never had a blood test. No, I was just meaning any photos, Miss Sellers. He didn't like having his photograph taken. Right. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's a shame. Um, if I could just go over with you again how they met. general interior designer for her ten, so she really, really knows her stuff. Dad sale and, and Mum. And, uh, well, in fact, Mum's brother was a stalwart of the Admiral's Cup, so um, it's in the blood. <laughs> His signature shows Mr. West checked in at four o'clock in the afternoon. And that's his signature showing that he checked out at seven o'clock the following morning. Any meal receipts? Uh, dinner paid for at 8.45. Bar tab? No. Any films in his room? <laughs> no. What? Well, he didn't go to his room, did he? I'm sorry, what? Look, I did tell your guys all this originally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Belt and braces. Well, just go through it with me again. You went out. Out? Yeah. A late one, too. How do you know this? There was a, a fire alarm. False, as it turned out. We had to evacuate the hotel at 3 a.m. Mr. West wasn't in his room. So you're saying... So you're saying that between 8.45 and 3 a.m., Mr. West was probably away from the hotel? Mm. Apparently, he was in a bar, strip club. Obviously, he didn't want his wife's family to know. Oh, no. No. Obviously. Bradley? Hmm? I'm either going nuts here or what? Well, have a look at this, would you? No. Listen, sir, I need to speak to Brennan. It is very, very important. You will get him out of the meeting. <sighs> yeah. All right, all right. Just get him to ring me, OK? As soon as he's out. 
This just came in a post addressed to me. Well, what the bloody hell does that mean? Well, in the first few days after she left him, she was supposed to have cleared out their bank account, wasn't she? Yes. Well, that's suggesting that she didn't. Well, why would Max say she did? If... Oh. Yeah. It lets everyone know that she's alive and well, doesn't it? Well, have you checked this out? Not yet. Oh, check. Boss, check. Hey, you. Oh, it's going great. You're a star. Couldn't do it without you. Well, the terrifying thing is, I think you could. <laughs> How was your day? Oh, more of the same. Just prelim tests at the moment. It's fine, it's nothing to worry about. Really? You look sad. No, I was just, um... I don't know. Just watching you yakking on with your mum and dad. It still sometimes hits me. And maybe I do have family out there somewhere. Well, maybe you're going to find them. You know, we've been worrying that it's all just going to be bad things. It's much more likely to be good. Yeah, you're right. Oh! What? Surprise present. With love. It's only a couple of months. But I've heard Bruges is beautiful in winter. <laughs> and the canals freeze over and it's all picture postcard kind of stuff. <laughs> it's midterm break, eh? You gorgeous, gorgeous man. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, look, Stannis, just, just calm down, calm down, OK? OK. Well, what sort of a problem? Come on. Back to the fray. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt this lovely moment. OK, I'm calling the police. Hi. You can't do this. What do you want, Stan? You. He's done nothing wrong. What must it be like to have a woman who loves you so much? Why doesn't it surprise me that you don't know? How long after your divorce came through did you meet him, Jenna? A couple of months, was it, in a wine bar? That's how he met his last wife. Wes didn't like having his photo taken, too. Coincidence, isn't it? My husband is not a murderer. He's a loving and gentle man. Yeah, and smart, too. Really smart. Ten withdrawals of 20 grand. No credit card spending, debit cards, cheques, just cash. You made everyone believe you'd squandered it, but actually, you've kept it, haven't you? I don't know what you're talking about. What with that and the life insurance, other little bits and bobs, you must have walked away with a cool half million. God, this is insane. Eight hours you were gone from the hotel. Eight hours. It's a six-hour round trip to Essex from Birmingham. You could have done it, Paul. His name is John. You could have done it. The timing works, Paul. His name is John, and he's not a murderer! All right. You won't get what you want, Stone. I promise you that. No, it's fine. Excuse me. They're faxing me over a hard copy in the morning, but I spoke to a regional manager. And he assured me there were no unusual withdrawals that month. Mac and Lucia's account certainly wasn't clear. He's sending the letters himself, sir. What? The computer's the same, the printer's the same, postmark is local. Mac! These are the subconscious acts of a man who wants to be caught and punished for what he's done. But what exactly has he done? You know, the obsession with Dean, it's, uh, it's transference, his, his way of dealing with it. Ah, oh, dealing with what? Never mind the psychobabble. Dealing with what? Well, the fact that he killed his wife. Killed her in a jealous rage. 
because she told him she was having an affair. How the hell do you know she was having an affair? Because it was with me. What are we saying? We're saying there's no point in trying to unblock drains that aren't blocked. But they are. Were, maybe, but not now. But don't take my word for it, it's all there in black and white. He has no memory problems. In fact, it's one of the healthiest memory trace patterns I've ever seen. If your man Dean ever did have amnesia, he certainly doesn't now. <laughs> 